Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to show you guys who probably shoot a lot of aviation and have seen these really cool gradients in the backgrounds of airplane shots, how to do that and how to put that gradient in there. Now, you probably see a lot more of this with military aviation, stuff like Blue Angels, Thunderbirds, Viper Demo, the F-22, F-35, stuff like that. It's a real simple technique to do, unless you know how to do it, though it might seem like a pain in the ass, but it's a real, it's a piece of cake. Now, I use Adobe products. I use Lightroom and Photoshop. I do most of my minor edits, my basic stuff in Lightroom, and then I export over to Photoshop, and I'll do the majority of my tweaking to get a picture just right, including the gradients. I do it in Photoshop. You can do the exact same gradients in Lightroom, and the couple differences there are between Lightroom and Photoshop with doing that, I'll tell you what they are when we get into those tools, but it's pretty much the same. So just so you know what we're talking about, here's a couple sample images of uh, Blue Angel shots I've taken over the past six months since the boys came back from winter training in March. Um, living in Pensacola, we get to see them every week, except for a couple weeks out of the year when they're on a West Coast tour or when the season ends in November. This is the kind of look we're going for, and let's jump into showing y'all how to do that. So here I've got a picture. I've already done some minor color adjustments and cropping to get it how I want for the most part in Lightroom. And now we're gonna go about throwing a gradient on the background. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our base layer. You don't wanna work on your base layer because if anything ever happens, you might need that to fall back on. And if it's not there, you're doing a whole lot of starting over. No point doing that. Now the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set that layer, our duplicated layer, we're gonna convert that to a smart object. You just right click, and go up to convert to smart object. Now what that does is allow you to make non-destructive edits on that layer. Now what do I mean by that? If you're new to Photoshop and working with these layers, if you have a rasterized layer or one that's not a smart object like this and you go open the camera raw filter, make edits, apply the edits, and then you find something you don't like about that edit, you can't go back and change it. You would have to delete the layer, reduplicate your base layer and start over from scratch. With a smart object, if you do all those same things, apply your edits, and you see something you don't like, you can just go reopen the filter, change a couple settings, and you're done. You don't have to worry about starting over. You just start from wherever you left it saved before. So it's a big time saver, which we all love, and it just makes the workflow easier. So smart object. All right, so we got a smart object. Now what we're gonna do is open up camera raw filter. To do that, you're gonna go up to filter, and camera raw, or you see you can do shift control A. I'm sure it's shift command A or something on a Mac or whatever those buttons are. I don't know Mac, so you might have to do those translations yourself. <clears throat> All right, so now that we're camera raw, the window has popped up. What we're gonna be looking for is these little tools on the right hand side. The third one down, at least on my computer, it's a circle with a little dotted border around it. That's our masking tool. That's what we're going to be using. So you want to click on that. It's going to open up this little menu that has different mask options. You can select subject, sky, brush. You can do a linear gradient, a radial gradient, color range, or luminance range. What we're going to be doing is a linear gradient. So go ahead and click on that. And you can do these gradients from any direction you want. Different angles work for different pictures. You got to play with it and see which way it looks the best. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to do it from the bottom right corner. So I'm going to drag that out, get it right about there. Now, if I was to adjust this mask as it is, you'll see it's going to adjust, it's going to underexpose the plane as well as the background. We don't want to touch the plane. So what do we do? This is where our favorite little tool is going to come in, and that is the intersect option. Right up here under linear gradient, you'll see add and subtract. All you gotta do is hold shift and you'll see intersect pop up and click that. Now I'm gonna do select subject because this is gonna select the plane. Now this is the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop. In Lightroom, you would hold the alt key down and it's not gonna say intersect, it's just gonna have this little icon that, like two little squares that it means intersect. But if you do it, you'll see what I'm talking about. So now that we've selected our subject, what we're telling the computer is we want to apply a linear gradient and we want to intersect that with the subject we selected. But we don't want to affect the subject, so we're going to invert our second mask, which is the subject mask. So as you can see right now, if I do it, 
it's gonna darken and lighten the airplane. I'm gonna do the opposite of that. So right here, you see this little icon? That's the invert mask. So click that, and now you'll see the sky is uh, selected. And we're like 90% done here. So now you can just adjust your exposure however you want. If you wanna brighten it up, if you wanna lighten it, whatever works best for your picture or whatever you like. When I'm adjusting my exposure, I don't like to do it all in the exposure slider. I like to kind of split it up along all these. So I'll go maybe 50 to 75% with the exposure of the max I want to put it. So if I was only going this far, I'd only bring it to about here. If I'm going all the way, I'll bring it about halfway. Then I'll take start from my brightest levels down to my darkest. I'll take my highlights and drop them just a little bit. My whites and drop them just a little bit. Shadows bring them down a little bit. And blacks just a little bit like that. And you'll see it gradually getting darker. Now the blacks, I don't want to bring it all the way down. I like to do the chef's kiss of dehaze to bring down the rest of the darkness. So I'll just come down here and bump that just a little bit. And there we have a pretty sick gradient laying over top of us, over our background. Now your texture and clarity here, sometimes your mask will leave a little white border around where the subject and the background separates. It doesn't always happen, it depends on how sharp your picture is, the resolution, like how many pixels you have to play with. But if you see a white border, you can drop the texture and clarity a little bit and it'll smooth that out and you'll get a much cleaner transition between the subject and the background. It makes for a good image. Now, you can get crazy with this. You can change the temperature of your gradient. You can make it warm, you can make it cool. You can apply a little hue over top of it. You can get creative as you want with it. You can desaturate and make it where it has no color. The possibilities here are endless. But that's the basics of getting a gradient laid out. You're just gonna do a linear gradient, you're gonna intersect it with your subject and make your gradient the way you want it to look. It's real simple. The best thing you can do is just get a bunch of pictures and practice, practice, practice. Practice different angles, just different setups. You'll start finding a way that just works for you and what works best for your pictures. Um, so you can just take mundane, normal looking photos and just make them where people see it and they're like, damn, that's good. So I hope that helped y'all out as far as a gradient background. If you have any questions or if I missed anything or I wasn't clear about anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll try, I'll try as hard as I can to get to you and help you figure out maybe what you did wrong or maybe something I did wrong explaining, whatnot. But uh, yeah, I'm more than open to this discussion in the comments. So just let me know. Um, if y'all want to help a guy out, hit that like and subscribe button. I hate asking for that, but you got to do it, right? And uh, I'll hope to see y'all next time. Y'all keep shooting. Take it easy.